Hello and welcome to another episode of Test the Coil Tuesday. In this video, I'm going to be testing three vacuum tube tester coil circuits. Well, three high frequency vacuum tube tester coil circuits. There's this one here, which is one of my own designs. And then there's this one here, which I haven't really had much luck with, but maybe this time will be the charm. And finally, this circuit, which can also do audio modulation. Anyway, enough waffle. So let's go into the shed and test out these circuits. Okay, so we're about to do the little plasma streamer, which uses these two transformers. GU50 valve. And of course, here's our output coil. Here's our output coil. Now, because I have so much trouble getting enough voltage into this thing, I thought I'd use two transformers. So I've got this transformer here, which steps the mains down to about 70 volts. Now I've got this microwave transformer, which steps it up to about 700 volts. And then that gets rectified to a thousand. Okay, the valve is warmed up, so it should be ready. Just going to do a low power test and see if we get anything out of this. Things tend to work a lot better when you actually remember to plug them in. So, let's try that again. Hopefully it's going to work now. I hope I'm not obscuring the camera shot. See, it was me breaking out all my meters and test equipment and everything, trying to figure out exactly why it wasn't working. And I just simply haven't plugged it in. But we should be getting something now. So let's see. Ah, oh, that's more like it. Oh, it just died. I think that's about the best that's going to work. But, yeah, it's working. Now, let's move on to something a little bit bigger. Okay, now we're going to try the other plasma flamer circuit. Using the GU81 tube. So, just giving you a quick little overview of how this all looks. Now, I've had to put this all on plastic bits because this table had metallic paint on it at an earlier stage of its life, so, you know, we don't really want any short circuits going on, so that's why that's all like that. You might be wondering why I'm using all these resistors here. Well, because in the particular circuit I'm going to do... Now, I know JD Flyback did, a, did one of these, and he says that the resistors get really hot, so... I don't actually have any power resistors, so what I've done is I've just strung a lot of low ohmage, I mean, low value resistors together. Hopefully they'll be able to take it. Right, chaps. After several failed attempts at making this work, what I've done is I've got this other circuit here. And this is based on one of Danny K's circuits, and this one actually does work. You might notice, you might be able to see that the end of that wire is quite melted there. Because I've been pulling some ox off that. And I've got this switch down here. And this switch is connected to a relay. Which shorts out the ballast, which is this heat line. Shorts that out, putting all the mains into this transformer. I don't know why I'm talking like that either. But yeah, like I said, this is based on one of Danny K's circuits. And they always work, or at least the ones that I've tried have always worked. But I'll just give you a little run, it's nothing spectacular, but at least it does work. It didn't work too good when I first built it. You know, barely did anything. And I flipped my feedback round and it pegged my meter, so I'll turn this on. Okay, I'm not getting any breakout. I just need I might just need to persuade it to come out. There we go. I'll put this on full power. And there we go. So yeah, it's working now. It's 
So this is the secondary, I guess you could call it that. Now it looks like there's three coils of wire on this thing, but actually there's only two. This is the feedback right here, and this is the 24 turn main winding. Thing is I've had to use multiple pieces of wire to actually construct that because I didn't have a single piece of wire long enough. So anyway, this is where the positive 2000 or 5000 volts goes in depending on how I've got the power supply configured. And then over here, there's a tap right there, that's where the anode is connected. And of course, up here, at the end, other end of the wire, we've got the breakout point. Okay, I'm going to try it doubled now. The previous one was halfway rectified and smoothed. Now I've got it running off a doubler, so let's see what we get out of this. I'm pretty sure this tube can take it. Oh yeah, that's pretty good. So that's doubled on low power. Let's try medium power. Let's try full power. Actually, that was through the ballast of the heater. I'm gonna go crazy and put all the power into this. Holy crap. Whew. That was good. Okay, so that definitely works. Now the next thing I wanna try is audio modulation. And that's going to have to require going back to the half wave and smoothed, but first let's just have another run of this thing. Let's see some more nice arcs. Kids, do not try this at home. No, seriously, this is dangerous. Flying. I love it. Yeah, I, I just can't help myself. Trying to do audio modulation now, but alas, I got nothing. I've got this little circuit here with a MOSFET in it. You might be able to see that. And this is the same circuit that Danny K thingy, whatever his name is, did. The only difference is I'm using an IRFP260 instead of an IRFP630. And I got nothing. Let's connect that up to this Walkman over here. Which is set to a volume on about halfway. And no matter where, where, I set this potentiometer spark length is always the same and there is no audio. Okay, I'm just trying to move the tripod up and not short out the switch contacts on the tripod. I'm trying to do something here that really requires about three pairs of hands and since I'm not an alien or a mutant I only have two. So this is what I've got at the moment and for some reason it isn't working anymore. There we go. Just a bit reluctant to start. Alright, now I'm going to move the potentiometer all the way over to the other side. It's about the same. So, uh -huh. now let's put it in the middle. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Well, I mean, that's not nothing, but, you know, no, no sound coming in. 
so I don't know what's going on. I've tested the MOSFET to make sure the MOSFET hasn't gone shorter and it's absolutely perfectly okay. So, your guess is as good as mine on this one, even on really low power. I still got nothing. That's some nice sparks. But, I got nothing. So, with two failed experiments and two successful experiments, I think that's the end of today's Tesla Coil Tuesday, so until next time, goodbye.